Hi there, friends. I have two decks I want to share with you today. Uh, one was gifted to me, and one is a um, a deck that I, I purchased just uh, as part of this sort of world of, um, you know, these, the, these nature-based decks that I'm looking for and hoping to work with this, uh, this month in particular. So uh, the first is the Herbal Healing deck by Sarah Baldwin, illustrated by Ashley Verkamp. And the second one is the White Mojo Lenormand Oracle um, by, well, by Conjure Shop or WhiteMojo.com, but the author's name is actually not listed in the book. Um, I will try to remember to find the author's name. Anyway, let me start with the Oracle deck. I'm sorry, the Lenormand deck, which was gifted to me by Tara Ness, by Melissa. Uh, this is, I didn't put this back in order because um, Lenormand decks are a pain in the neck to put back in order. But what's interesting mostly are that this deck, um, aside from the beautiful art, and it does have beautiful art, what's mostly interesting about this deck is that it has extra cards. Um, and if I were smart, I would have <laughs> pulled those out. But it came in this beautiful, I mean, not beautiful, but you know, this useful um, plastic container and then uh, with this book. And the book covers the each card. And, uh, you know, it's a very good primer on on the cards. So if you were if you were look, getting into this and just wanting to learn the meanings, I think this is a good a good primer. And the author also talks about why the decisions were made for the extra cards, so what he added and why. I'm going to put that aside so I can reference it momentarily, and I'm going to zoom in. So you can just see a couple of the cards. I'll, I'll do like a quick walkthrough. I keep playing with this setup to make the videos better, look better, sound better, and uh, it is um, an experiment and a work in progress. So um, hopefully this looks all right, and hopefully you're hearing me okay. I'm I'm using this insane setup of uh, an external microphone hooked up to my phone, which is drawing power from my phone. So my phone has to be plugged in. So I have my phone plugged into my Mac, and then my Mac itself is plugged in. Um, or, well, now it is. And uh, so, anyway, who cares? And then I've got lighting and, ugh, craziness. So, again, this is not an order. So, um, there are two title cards, and they read very simply. They're very tiny, but the first one reads, in uh, the White, uh, White Mojo Lenormand Oracle is a 42-card deck inspired by the beauty and mystery of the traditional deck made famous by Mademoiselle Lenormand, the fortune teller of Napoleon and Josephine Bonaparte, illustrated with vintage images by a variety of artists spanning f the, um, the past four centuries. And then the second one says, copyright 2000 White Willow Press. Uh, so it's just the copyright information uh, compiled by, oh, here's the name, compiled by a companion book written by Gregory L. White. So, um... There uh, are additional cards, as I said. This is one of them. This, I believe, is the Nun. Um, and they are referenced in the book, yeah, the Nun. So uh, when the Nun card appears, it's time to look inward and ask yourself with honesty, what role did I play in this situation? The Nun puts others first, even to her own discomfort, putting the shoe on the other foot. A time to reflect, meditate, and ruminate. Take time to stop and really listen to what others have to say. Um... So that's one of the additional cards. And they're numbered, you know, consecutively. Uh, the Lovers is another one. And um, Romance Values, this card can mean marriage, love, or a new lover. But it also digs deeper looking at all the emotional strengths such a relationship represents. Mutual respect, working together to achieve goals, cooperation, strong bonds. Um Oh, maybe I did separate the, the new cards. Uh, so here's the devil, uh, which is also um, an addition, which suggests negativity and addiction, very similar to the the stereotypical definition of 
the devil in tarot. Uh, and then there's a king and queen. I don't think I put the king and queen together. But they represent either um, additional, uh, if I'm not mistaken, maybe it doesn't. The king. Opinions and authority represents those in your lives who hold power over you, a boss, a father, a company, even an attitude. Um, but I think he says in the beginning of the book that they could be used to represent same-sex partners. But anyway, um, so you can see that the art uh, is, is really striking. There are a couple cards in here that I find difficult to remember what they are because I don't remember the numbers of all the cards all that well. Um, there's another, there's the queen. Um, so there are a couple that when I look at them, I don't immediately think, oh, um, that's that card. Uh, this is one, I mean, this is one, for example, when you look at it at first glance, it looks like it's the bird, but it's actually the letter. But, uh, I do love the art. I love this child card. It's so, there's a, there's sort of, um, a range of, of, periods and styles in the deck which is nice but they all they do feel sort of nice and in fact i'm going to show you in a sec but it it it, it seems to work nicely with the rackham oracle um this is the woman this is another one it's the coffin once you sort of realize what it is you get it but it does look like a person at first the book the scythe is very clear the lily is very clear the fish, the bouquet, the ship. This, um, this is the whip, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I, I don't know the numbers. Lenormand is not my forte, as, as we've all learned. Yeah, this is the whip. Um, the stork. So I don't have the, this is the stars. I don't have all the numbers memorized. This is another one that I had to look up. This is the cross. The mountain, the key. Most of them, they were very clear. Um, sorry, to, this is the man card. The anchor. The snake is very clear. The ring. Whoops. This is another one of the additional cards. This is the jester. The sun. The moon, I love this moon. Um, it's so beautiful. It's got sort of an um, um, Beardsley, Aubrey Beardsley quality to it. Um, and very Art Deco. This is a, um, the Crossroads, I think. Um, yes, and this is the, uh, probably the last one that I just find difficult to, to remember what it is from a design perspective. But then we've got the tower. And finally, the mice. So um, most of the cards are very clear in that regard. So um, I really like this deck a lot. Shuffles really nicely. Comes with this great box. Uh, and the guidebook is really nice as well. So um, this is a lovely um, riff on, Len on Lenormand, if you're if you're interested in those decks that are... are um, um, oh, I wanted to show you the Rack Oracle. But if you're interested in those decks that are... You, you know, uh, uh, like Lenor Lenormand-esque, but that have additions to them, um, this is one that you may want to consider. So, you know, again, it's not a perfect match, but just, like, art style-wise, um, they do seem to sort of look nicely together. Um, you know, there's just sort of a nice har harmony between them, or like a, syn a synchronicity between them, so... Do not shuffle the title cards back into the deck. So anyway, um, that's that deck. And thank you so much, Melissa, for sending this to me. I'm super, you know, in love with it. And um, definitely a lover of Lenormand car decks or Lenormand-inspired decks that have additional cards to them. I'll say this while it's in front of me. I used the Rackham Oracle in a reading for um, a client reading the other day as... Um, like a prompt to give the reading an overall theme and that wound up being um at least according to the person i read for a success so 
um, it's nice to see that the Rackham Oracle is gonna it's gonna find a place. And I know that it can be used for reading readings. I just haven't done any with it yet. So the next one that I got um, is the Herbal Healing deck by again Sarah Baldwin and Ashley Verkamp. This is an interesting deck. I've been you know really interested in plant based animal like sort of nature based decks lately. In part because as I go into November. I, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the Into the Wildwood conversation uh, with, with Kelly and company. Uh, but also just, you know, it's something that's been, you know, reaching out to me in, in the last few months. Um, and so it's timely. I've been looking for, so I, I said this in For the Love of Cards or For the Love of Cards the other day, that I am looking for some really balanced oracle decks to use that are nature-based uh now that the october season is over i've put the halloween oracle back on the shelf but i'm looking for something to replace that for the month i don't think this is quite gonna get there but it is um it's nice so i will say that uh if you have recommendations for me on like a sort of a a nature-based companion to the or uh, Halloween Oracle, I'd love to love to hear about it. I think the secret language of animals keeps coming up, and I keep looking at it. There's something about it that I keep not falling for, and I I can't put my finger on it yet. But um, so anyway, this is not a super balanced deck. In fact, it's very it's very affirmational and it's it's very positive in a lot of ways of course it's a deck about healing but i knew that going in so the the criticisms that i have of this deck are you know based in part on the fact that i knew you know i knew what i was getting when i got it i knew what i was getting into um so it is a it is a largely positive deck although i'll say that it's positive to neutral so one thing that i think can be interesting is to partner this with cards with tarot cards and explore whether the concept on the the oracle card um is is in balance or in deficit so you know the light or shadow aspect of these fairly mostly fairly neutral elements or concepts could be really interesting um to explore with additional cards which is how i've been using uh, the Ho Halloween Oracle. The Halloween Oracle was sort of like a prompt for the reading, so the werewolf card would come out, and it would be embracing your wild side, and then the rest of the the tarot cards that I, I pulled with it were about exploring that or expanding that. So anyway, um, this is a Schiffer deck, um, and so we know that it has a really nice box with a magnetic closure and... Um, these sort of unnecessary but really nice ribbons. What I actually would really love if they did with this particular deck is use save the ribbon for a lifting ribbon because though the cards sit comfortably in the box, they're hard to get out without sort of tipping it over. So the book, um, this is the guidebook, and it's a big, you know, juicy guidebook. It's, oh uh, gosh, it's about 144 pages. It seems to be well-researched. I'll slide that over and then the cards sit in here um so you can see that they don't they won't slide around and i don't think they'll get damaged but um unless you have like a tiny hand i think that it's going to be really hard to get the cards out consistently um in fact you ultimately really do have to tip them out um so I don't know. I don't know if these will stay in here. I don't know, you know, that this will become a working deck or if it's something that I may pass along. You know, I, I think I'm going to explore it. Um, it definitely has some legs up on on other decks that um, I've gotten that are similar in the past few months. But there are a couple things that I would say uh, I, I don't love about it, too. But by and large, I think it's a successful deck, certainly for what it is. I think what I knew I was getting... Um, it was clear and and whatever I whatever sort of concerns I have are about whether or not I'm willing or able to make that work for me. I do like the art style a lot. I wish it were a little richer color wise. Pastels, um, they're just not my thing. But again, I saw cards, 
you know, so I knew what I was getting when I got into it. I made the decision to accept this deck as it is. Whatever thoughts I have about it now or about whether I'm willing to to, to accept them and, and bring them into the working, you know, the work. Um, so anyway, the book, I think, um, has some really successful things about it. And one of the most successful things I think about this deck and book set is that the author, by and large, does uh, a pretty good job of connecting the keywords on the cards to the energy and uses of the uh, of the plant. And that means a lot because in a lot of the decks that I've looked at, including Tower of Plants from the other day and obviously the Wisdom of Trees Oracle, I had some issue with the connection between the energy of the card and what the author said about it and the keywords they chose for it. Um, I also like that the keywords are written on the cards. That, to me, seems really useful. Um, I did not do, you know, like a word-perfect reading of this book, but I did read a lot of it. And uh, the deck is organized into four suits. So there's roots, herbs, flowers, and trees. And the nice thing is that they're, the cards are not color-coded by suit, but you do have a little icon that indicates the suit. Um, can you see that? Ish. I'll zoom in in a second. They do have an icon, um, and I think that's that's nice to sort of just be a nice visual cue. The only one I don't love is the flower. It just sort of looks like a wheel to me. Um, so then, you know, there's the usual about the deck, creating the deck, you know, where it came from, the idea of working with plant, plant energy. And again, it seems to be really authoritative. Uh, the deck is, you know, it's not just sort of... A, what Kelly calls a hug deck, uh, or it's not intended to be anyway. It's 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 meant to be used for divination, um, and there are a couple, you know, suggested uses. It also talks about limitations in terms of what this deck can actually do. Uh, mostly, that's a disclaimer about health. Uh, it gives you some suggestions for spreads. Um, it also aligns each of the suits with a season and a direction. So. Um, you can use this for timing readings. It talks about choosing a question. There are some sample spreads. So there's a directional spread. Uh, there's a past, present, future spread. With a deck as neutral to positive as this, I'm not sure how, you know, honestly, how sort of uh, objective a past, present, future you're going to get from from a deck that's largely pretty, um, pretty bright, uh, you know, energy-wise. But, you know... This this is also a thing where, you know, I'm I'm looking at it from the perspective of someone that I wasn't the audience for this deck. Um, and despite the fact that I'm not the audience for this deck, I find it successful in a lot of ways. So that's a nice thing. But as I think it's worth pointing out that I'm very clearly not who is intended to use this deck. Uh, and what I'm what I'm really finding is that the thing I'm looking for right now doesn't exist. And I'm trying to force other things to fit that category. And this does a nice job despite that. Um, so there are the spreads, and then you get each um, each suit gets a chapter, and then each card gets a couple pages. Um, so the suit of roots is aligned with winter and the direction of north. Um, it talks about how roots sort of live underground, and they store the life force during winter, which makes total sense. I do think, again, the connections between the energy of the, the plant and the energy of the season and the energy of its... Um, category all those are really well chosen I feel and then you get each each description of each card now I'm not going to read all of them because obviously there's there's 40 how many cards are there uh, oh, it doesn't, 48 cards so obviously that would take forever and it's the whole book really but it's a co full color book um, I do you know if I had one criticism of the book I wish that it were organized a little bit more you know categorically so that you know we would get like here's the card here's the keyword here's some history and here's some divinatory meaning you know i wish the organization were a little clearer in order to kind of find the divinatory meanings if you're interested in doing that you do need to kind of read the whole thing but um i'll look at you know i'll look at two or three examples as we go through um so that's the book i think it's really nicely written um you know, it's Schiffer, so the cover, you know, I don't know if you can see this, but the cover is, like, matte with glossy highlights. The box has that, too. I think that's really classy. Um, 
Again, not wild about this. It, but the rest of the icons, I think, are sort of stylish. So um, that's the guidebook. I'm going to put it over here. And then I'll just sort of walk through the cards so you can see them and read a couple of the, of the descriptions. I'm going to zoom in. So it's it's Schiffer stock, um, but actually I feel like it's a little bit nicer than uh, I don't have many Schiffer decks, um, but the one that I remember struggling with the most was the what's it called the um, the tattoo deck was it the Bonefire? It might yeah I think it's the Bonefire, um, which I honestly haven't used much. Um, but this stock is actually, it's not sticky. And the cards were not super stuck together when they when I, when I took them out of the box. There was a little bit, but not much. So there's like a nice slickness to them that feels nice. The gloss isn't, you know, for glossy cards, it's not terrible. Um, the, you know, again, I really do like the deck, so I'll say that. It does border on Twee to me. It, it, it stands at the edge of being cute. And Cute and I are not buddies. Um, you know, all of the plants have eyes on them, which may be a turnoff for some folks. Um, this one, there's a couple that are sort of as obvious as this one is. Most of them actually I, I kind of like because they look like masks, which I think is interesting. Um, this first one, but, you know. Um, so let me just use this first one as an example. Uh, I'll read... I won't read the whole thing, but I'll read some highlights from what the guidebook says. So this is um, the first card, uh, which is Black Kohash. The, the keyword is darkness. This is one of the few that really has sort of a, you know, a more shadow keyword. There's maybe one or two others, but it says, so it gives you a little bit of history native to the forests of the eastern United States. Black Kohash is a stately plant with knee-high foliage and long, thin stem holding the unicorn-like horn-like raceme of flowers at eye level. Um, walking into a black cohosh patch in bloom is magical. The heavy scent of flowers envelops you, blocking out distractions from the outside world. You feel as if you've wandered into a timeless space where mysterious creatures may peek from behind the seams of uh, from behind yeah, the seams behind the seams of reality at any moment. And then it so it gives you a little bit of introduction, and then it tells you what the plant does or what it's been used for medicinally or historically. So the root of this plant is used for treating muscle spasms and cramps, as well as rheumatic and fibromyalgic pain. Black cohosh is especially useful for feminine reproductive conditions like PMS, childbirth, and postpartum recovery. The plant also eases depression of a deep, dark brooding and, uh, and brooding nature. Energetically, black cohosh heals damage done to the feminine side of our being. Even the name of this plant brings to mind darkness and depth. Regardless of your gender, black cohosh represents the yin or feminine side of your being. Whatever the subject of your inquiry, some form of dark fog is shrouding this aspect of your life. Very likely you can feel this tangibly and it is possible that you are experiencing a sense of suffocation or a dark night of the soul. Um, so I won't read the whole thing. Uh, it goes on. Sometimes they'll quote an herbalist or a, 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 a homeopathic healer. Herbalist Matthew Wood names black cohosh the whiplash remedy because the plant has an affinity for treating this condition. American Indians consider black cohosh a snake medicine and used it to treat snake bites. Uh, in both cases, the damage or poison is taken into the system from an outside blow. Uh, this is symbolic of the damage that you're healing from. Now, here's an example where I don't super see the connection between the keyword of darkness and the plant itself and what it does, uh, other than the fact that it's called black cohosh and the keyword is darkness. But um, taking what the plant does and connecting it to divinatory meanings, actually, you know, there's it's it's OK. It does a good job. And and most of them are, are a little bit even, even better than that. Um, so that's the first one. The cards are not numbered. So once they're shuffled, you know, you have to sort of look at the suit and approach that. But the table of contents uh, at the beginning of the book actually makes that easy to reference. So that's the first one. Um, that's what the back looks like. Can you see? Yeah, you can see that. Um, so again, I won't read all of them. Um, but the next one is Burdock, which is Detoxify. Butterfly Weed, which is Transformation. 
um Colt's foot which is presence uh dandelion which is manifestation that's one where i felt like there was a really nice connection between what uh was written in the guidebook and what was on the card um i don't i don't you know they're they're super long so i don't want to read a lot of them but this is one where i thought it was really successful um so you know and again it's an interesting thing about dandelions and how we as humans react to the world around us although dandelion is not uh, is a well-known plant it's not always a popular one folks spend quite a bit of energy eradicating these plants from their lawns and gardens in fact dandelion has become the poster child for weed killing sprays and chemicals ironically this herb is of great benefit to the liver which helps detoxify our bodies from myriad chemicals we encounter in today's world every part of the plant root leaves blossoms and sap can be used as food and medicine with the widespread use of toxic substances in our world it's no wonder that the dandelion appears abundantly under our feet as a healing gift from earth dandelion's ability to grow just about anywhere even in the crack of a sidewalk is a testament to the plant's tenacious personality its taproot gathers nutrients from deep within the soil and holds on to life even when the entire upper portion of the plant is destroyed the yellow blooms carry the energy of the solar plexus in the center of our willpower. Drawing dandelion signifies that you are on the right track toward accomplishing your goal. You are probably feeling very action-oriented and driven by the desire for success and achievement. It's possible you have worked very long and hard on a project, and the dandelion is here to cheer you on. The manifestation of your dreams is on its way. While physical action is necessary for accomplishment, dandelion reminds us to balance action with pure intention. Think of children plucking a dandelion to blow the fluffy seeds into the wind as they make wishes for the future. All great feats start with an idea, a thought, and intention alone can have powerful effects on manifesting our reality. So it goes on to talk about the law of attraction and um, how we as humans look at dandelions as weeds, and our tendency to overlook what's good around us, and it makes a lot of sense. So, um, so that's that one. Uh, Devil's Club Reclaim Power. This is one where I feel like it could have gone in more of a shadow direction. The book does actually a little bit, um, but again, it's it's an affirmational deck, so it's not about your experiencing, which you know some slightly you know negative energy, you know rather than focusing on that, they're focusing on like time to take back your power um dream root for dreams ginseng for conservation golden seal for healing red root again this is another one that has sort of a shadow aspect called shadow side uh teasel for protection turmeric for persistence aloe for resourcefulness oh so now we're actually in the leaves so with turmeric we leave the roots and with uh, aloe we go into the leaves section so we've got aloe uh, bonus set chickweed for perspective uh, horsetail for higher self motherwort for initiation mugwort for cycles nettle for receiving oats for fertility Poison Ivy for Caution. There's another one that has slightly shadow aspect. Um, Tulsi for Faith. Uh, wood Betany for Grounding. Wormwood for Mystery. Calendula for Shine. So now we're into the flowers. The flower suit are the least kind of exciting to me for some reason. It's, um, I don't, I, it just, these are the most sort of like glossy uh, in terms of their personality. Um, and it just sort of feels like a little, like a little bit, you know, where this deck goes into just a little too sort of like huggy time for me again, you know, recognizing that it wasn't meant for me. Um, chamomile for inner child, clover for flow. Again, I feel like clover has a lot more associations that, you know, could be useful daffodils for self-worth here's a secret about me i'm profoundly allergic to daffodils um and they, they you know the second they come around i start sneezing and my nose swell you know my nose blocks up and so i hate them um and you know of course there's a lot of charities that use them i think um 
and I feel bad because every year at work they would have a charity fundraiser and people would buy daffodils and they would arrive in the office one day and I would have to leave early that day every time. Hops for celebration. Now that makes sense, right? Because hops go into beer, which is really what we know them for. Um, Moonflower for death and rebirth. Again, this is another place where it could have gone a little darker than it does, but it fits into our kind of generalized new age thing. Rose for open heart. Again, I feel like maybe some opportunity to talk about thorns. Um, but uh, shooting star, which I suppose is a flower. I don't really know a lot about that for life's purpose. Uh, Spilanthes? Spilanthes for decision. St. John's wort for illumination. Again, I feel like illumination... The connection in the book seems to be about the fact that it's associated with midsummer and that it has a very sunny quality to it. But we know a lot today about what St. John's Ford is used for, and I feel like there's an opportunity there to go deeper than just illumination. Um, and violets for introspection. Uh, yarrow for boundaries. And now we're into the trees. The trees, to me, are kind of the most uh, successful um, suit. Um, so we've got cedar for ritual cherry for renewal, uh, elder for ancient wisdom, ginkgo for patience, hawthorn for heart healing, maple for abundance, oak for strength, pine for awakening, sycamore for subconscious, uh, Vitex for self-mastery. I think that's how that's pronounced. Walnut for letting go. And Willow. That's like, yeah, Willow for interconnection. Um, so that's a walkthrough of the deck. Um, just, you know, let me uh, zoom out again. Um, so, you know, I'll shuffle just to sort of give you a sense of that. In terms of overhand shuffling, it's really nice. There really isn't any stickiness to them. I think these are... Maybe they're not. Yeah, they're a little too long for me to shuffle, riffle shuffle, but I think I can do it. Oops. Maybe not. I think I can do it sideways. It's a little stiff. Let me fix myself here. Yeah, I think it'll 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 wear in. Um, this is how I shuffle the Halloween Oracle too. Uh, but I did kind of bend one of the cards as I tried to do that the first time, so be thoughtful, and careful. It's not tear like it's not creased, but I did bend it. So again, I don't know that I would do like a full spread of cards with this, um, but as the, you know, as the prompt for reading here, we have shooting star for life's purpose. Um, you know, it would be interesting to sort of say, okay, so, you know, one of the things I have been using Oracle decks for is setting a theme for a reading, you know what I mean? So if someone has a general question, I really try as much as I can to at least distill it down to something that... Um, has a focus for us um and so oracle decks to me seem like a nice place to start you know and then i might ooh, i might take another deck and sort of say okay let's explore in this general reading the idea of life's purpose um this is the wooden tarot which i took out for the month this is not quite the nature-based tarot deck that the ones that i've got also i've got the um Animal Totem out, obviously the um, Wild Wood, and then I've got the Wild Unknown, and I just ordered a couple decks that I'll do walkthroughs of when they come in. This deck has really gotten bowed since I last used it, but actually it still shuffles pretty well. Um, so I have mixed feelings about this deck. I'm not sure how much I... So it's, it's out partly for me to also 
sort of see how much I want to work with it. Uh, one of the problems I have with this deck is remembering the suit names. Um, and I don't... Oh, it's on the back of the box. So Plumes is... Oh, they're not on the back of the box. So I don't. I have to go back and re remind myself what the suits are. Um, but you know, I might use this to explore. I think this is Wands. I I really I can't remember. It's been so long since I've used this deck. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna get into review of this deck anyway. I would use it in probably that way to explore. Um, the idea of like what this is like the the prompt for the reading and then let the rest of the cards sort of um say more so anyway um it's a nice deck uh and definitely you know if if you're looking to learn more about herbalism or you want to sort of explore that path um i think this deck might be an interesting place to start certainly um the guidebook has a lot of information there is a bibliography in the back, so you can see where they sourced their information, which is nice. I don't, I did not notice footnotes. Um, with something like this, you kind of wish that there were, um, but it's fine. You know what I mean? Again, this is not this is not a masterclass in herbalism. It's it's an oracle deck for reading. So you know, but I think you know it might inspire you to learn more. So anyway, that's the herbal healing deck again by Sarah Baldwin and Ashley Verkamp. Uh, published by Schiffer. This is not super new. I think it came out last year at some point, So, but I have not seen it around, so I figured I would throw this up there. Uh, so that's that. I uh, hope you're doing well. Be good, and talk to you soon.